We don't think we sin anymore. If we, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We have deceived ourselves into thinking that our sins are just shortcomings. No, they're sins. Hallelujah. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, He faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But if we do not confess, if we do not come before the Lord and say, Lord, I sin. Lord, would you forgive me? I ask you to cleanse me. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about apologizing. I'm talking about confession. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And then verse 10. This is where we are. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, when we come and when we come before the Lord in repentance and we come before the Lord in confession, this is what we do. First John chapter 3, you're in first John, go to chapter 3 to read with me, verses 1 through 3. It says, Behold, one manner of love the, the Father hath bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. We love it. We are, we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's shouting ground right there. But if, if you would you read the next verse, verse 3 says, and every man that hath this hope, what hope? The hope of becoming like Jesus, the hope of being resurrected. Every man that hath this hope in him purified himself even as he is pure. David said in Psalms 139, verses 24 and 25, he said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me that I might not sin against you. Instead of, instead of searching so hard for the prosperity, we need to ask God to come and to search our hearts and, and to purge the world out of us, purge the sinfulness out of us out of, that all of us have. We're just like Lot was in, 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 in Sodom and Gomorrah. He was vexed. He had no influence. Hallelujah. He was vexed because of the influence of all the wickedness that was going on. And you know what? We're the same way. We have been vexed. We have been influenced to abandon the truths and the very basis of Christianity. Amen. I ain't hearing a whole lot of amen. <laughs> Ooh, glory. Let me... Speak very frankly about sin. Christianity over the last several decades has been has been characterized by this. We get caught up in, in, in being outraged at the sin of the hour. Right now it's homosexuality. Same thing. We could blow it off. Oh, oh Lord, what are they doing? Oh, oh. Meanwhile, back at the farm, meanwhile, back at the church. Meanwhile, in our home, there's a whole lot of other sin that's still going on. Ain't nobody saying nothing about it. Amen. All right. <laughs> Galatians chapter, chapter 5, verse 19, verses 19 through 21 says this. Now the works of, uh, of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Witchcraft. All right. Witchcraft. How many of y'all getting ready to done got your homes all decorated up looking like a haunted house? <laughs> Waiting to celebrate Satan's holiday. Mm -hmm. To do the very thing which God told us as Christians and people that follow God not to do. I'm moving on. That's right. <laughs> Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife. Get mad all the time. Strife. Always in an argument. Seditions, heresies, envy, lusting after what you what your neighbor has, lusting after this, living living our lives in lust after after worldly things, just can't get enough. Amen. Does that describe where we're at? Yep. Envy and murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such the like. Now I want you to notice something. I got any I got any once saved always saved people in here that believe that you know well the Christian is not going to hell. I want you to notice something that is not listed in this list of, 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 of sins here. It does not say whether you're a Christian or not. It doesn't matter. Watch what it says. And they which do such things. Doesn't say Christian or not Christian. Doesn't say Jew or Gentile. It just simply says they which do. So if you're a Christian and you got the label on and you're doing this stuff, guess what? You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God according to this scripture. Amen. We're not. Let me say we're not. 
Because I'm not preaching at you, I'm preaching to you. I'm preaching with us. Hallelujah. Amen. But see, we have Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8 says this. The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all liars. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Brother, we done got so good at lying. You come to church, well, brother, can you do it? Well, I don't know. Lying has become second, na second nature within the church. We're talking about homosexuality. We're talking about, we're talking about, we, we, we're talking about same-sex marriage. We got no lying in the church. Go to work and lie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it's nothing. Oh, God understands. Mm -hmm. When the Bible says Satan was a liar from the beginning. Yep. Hallelujah. You see, we need to do some inventory. We need to do, and again, we need to do some serious introspection. And serious evaluation. This is how revival comes. Revival will come not when the anointed preacher comes and sings us into the glory land and preaches the glory. Now, it will come when the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm talking about you, I'm talking about me, I'm talking about all of us, come to this altar and we say, Lord, clean me up. Lord, I repent. Lord, I ask you to forgive me. I'm not going to walk the way I've been walking. I'm not going to talk the way I've been talking. I want to be more like you. Somebody give him praise and glory in this place. That's when revival will happen, brother. Hallelujah. Confession. This next one is huge. Forgiveness. We forgot how to forgive. Can I ask? I need to help, bro. <laughs> Me and him standing before God. He happens to be a different race than what I am. I'm, I'm black. He's white. I don't like white people. Never did. Never cared for them. I ain't lived in the same town they live in. How does conversation go? Square in front of Jesus. I like them Jews. How does that conversation happen in heaven? You get up there, we get up there, we stand up there before the Lord. I said, oh, I'm glad to be here, but please don't put me in his section. Don't put me next to him. You know what I think the Lord's going to do? He's going to look at us and say, Well, you know, I got this other place, yeah. I have this other address. I'm telling you this because this is something the Lord began to deal with me. I was, I was, out, I was, I was down in Ely working. I was out doing some yard work. Amazing how God will talk to you when you're doing yard work. <laughs> it's really hard done that. <laughs> and God began to deal with me on forgiveness. I'm going to show you in a minute. Now don't 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 jump up right now. But some of you, if you think in your, if you're thinking in, in the back crevices of your mind, there's somebody years ago that you had a disagreement with. They made you mad. I mean, they offended you. They sinned against you. They hurt you. And you forgive them. But I'll be all right if I never see them again. <laughs> Amen. If I never have to sit in church with them, if I see them, I'm gonna sit on the other side. Christianity 101. You see, we think, oh, the high praise, and I'm a prophet of God, I'm an apostle of the Lord, but we're walking in unforgiveness. We haven't forgiven people. What you go, how's that conversation going to go with Jesus? There he, there he stands. There, 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 there's the enemy standing right side of him. Lord Jesus, I'm glad to be here, but please, don't put me, don't put me next to him. Don't put my mansion, I hope my mansion's a couple of blocks down the road from him. How's that conversation going to go? I mean, really think about how's that conversation going to go? Thank you, brother. Love you. How? And I'm talking about because you know what? I got some. I got some. I got some baggage in my trunk too, brother. I got some fault that messed on me big time. Well, you know, 
Lord, what am I going to do if I'm standing there right next to them? They're standing right next to me on Judgment Day. And I said, well, Lord, I sure hope, I'm glad to be here, but I sure hope you don't put me in, in the same neighborhood as them. Listen to what Jesus said in the Scripture. You see, if we don't deal with this stuff, if we don't deal with it, we lose out of eternity. In the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, it says, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's right. Matthew chapter 6, verse, verses 14 and 15. If, if, for if, if I say if, yeah. one of the biggest words in the, in the Bible. If ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you, will forgive you. But, verse 15, but if you forgive not their trespasses or sins or debts, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Brother, I begin to think about that. Oh my God. I'm talking about for me. How's that conversation go in heaven? When we're still 20 years later, we done forgot about it, but we still hadn't forgiven it. And all somebody got to do is bring the subject up or see them and it just comes right back up. Anybody ever had a conversation and you bring an old subject up and just like it just happened. The same emotions come up. The same feelings come up that you had dealt with. You just put it in the back and you have not dealt with it. Hallelujah. That's why we have to pray. That's why we have to seek. And yes, I believe God was dealing with Robert Cornbread about some things in his in his bucket, in his closet, in his in his treasure chest. Hallelujah. That he done buried in the backyard somewhere hoping somebody forget it. Go and forget about it. That God will never know about it. Amen. And I said, Lord, search my heart. He can, let me get back to the basics. Hallelujah. This this one is, is the whole reason I built the sermon. I said, Lord, we're doing, I'm doing all this stuff. We're doing all this stuff, and we're forgetting about the basics. I can stand up, I can walk up there, stand and breathe my breath, last breath, my heart stop beating, and walk and stand in front of the Lord and say, you can't come in here because you've got so much unforgiveness. But Lord, I spoke with tongues. Lord, I preached the gospel. Lord, I went all the way to Alaska. I went down to Mexico. Lord, we, we camped in the woods. Lord, don't you know what we did for you? <laughs> you ain't forgiven. And because you hadn't forgiven I can't forgive you. Amen. I'm sorry, folks. This time I can play in church. We've got to get real. We've got to get back to the basics because if, you, if the man never speaks in tongues, but he walks in forgiveness and love, hallelujah, he's getting into heaven. You ain't. Amen. If you walk in business. Hallelujah. I've had some people hurt me. I've had some people offend me. I've had some people, you know, and I'm sure I know I've offended other people. You can't be have the last name what good bread and not offend somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm I am i am not preaching at you. I'm I'm just I'm preaching to it to us. Say so we got to really get a grip on what really, really, really matters. Amen. Because at the end of the day, we just had a good friend of ours pass. From this life to the next. Good friend of ours. He didn't even know he was near to death. He died. I, I believe he went to heaven. But it, every time I run across that, I said, Lord, am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Notice how we've started hiding funerals in our society. We don't do it anymore. It's because we're hiding death. Because every time you go to a funeral, you're reminded, is the point of the man who wants to die and after that the judgment? Praise the Lord. I'm going to move on real quick because I forgot to wear my watch. Love. The cornerstone of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is love. That's right. If you do not have love, you're a, if you speak in tongues and don't have love, you're a tingling symbol. You're making a lot of noise. How many of you don't raise your hand? <laughs> How many of you, and I've seen it, I've seen church, I've seen church folk. I'm talking about Pentecostal church folk. Speak in tongues, give a message in tongues, but mean as a rattlesnake when you see them outside the church. 
I mean mean, brother. Well, yeah, bless God. Put, put everybody in hell, including. Don't mess with them. But they, they, they can speak in tongues. They can shout, Ooh, God, who not of us? And mean. Don't have any love. I would submit to you that person could make it in because if you ain't got love, you ain't got Jesus. Hallelujah. If you got love, you got Jesus. If you got God, you got Jesus. Hallelujah. You got love. Hallelujah. You're going to walk in love. You come up with something. You begin to realize that, yeah, that person can be do is, is doing wrong, but you know what? There but by the grace of God go I. Hallelujah. I can be caught in the same thing. I can be turned into the same thing. But we like to, so we like to pick up our nose. Yeah. I, look at that. Look at that person. Yeah. I never do that. Really? My Bible tells me to beware when you think you stand lest you fall. You stick up your head and think you all that in the bowl of chairs. Think you all big and bad. In Jesus, I'm walking in the Holy Ghost. I'll never sin. You in the, you in the worst sin there is. Pride. Already. In the worst sin. That's how Satan fell from heaven. He was lifted up in pride. We must walk in love. We got to love everybody. That doesn't mean we just roll over and play dead and say that their sin is right. We have to, we have to identify. We have to love. Look, look, man, you're. This is just gonna wind you in hell. We have to tell them the truth, but we tell them the truth. We preach the truth in love. I'm not telling you this because I want to. I want to condemn you. I'm telling you this because I don't want you to spend an eternity in hell. I don't want you to spend an eternity in the flame. I, I guarantee you, those that are ten thousand miles below your feet right now, they're in that lake of fire. I wish somebody one more time would tell them to turn from their sin and to, and to leave them to Jesus. Don't give me a thousand dollars. Just tell me the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. And we can do that in the love of Christ and still maintain a loving a, 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 a loving demeanor about ourselves. We've got to have faith. Hebrews 6, 11, 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. For those, the, those that come to God must believe that He is and that He is rewarded them that diligently seek Him. We've got to believe again. We've got to begin to believe this Word of God. But we've got to get in the Word of God and see what it really says. Hallelujah. We've got to know what we're really believing in. God is not our personal fairy. That's right. Hello? That's right. But He is our God. Amen. He's not our genie. Yep. But He is our God. That's right. Revelations 2 and 5 again. Remember therefore for once thou art fallen. And repent. Repent means to turn and do the first works, or else I will come quickly and remove thy candlestick from out of its place, except thou repent. We need to we need to get to the place where we remember from where we follow. Look at the, read the history of the church. Read, go back in your memory and remember what church was like, how how Christians used to do before this new age mess come along. Hallelujah. And remember, remember from where you have fallen. Hallelujah. And repent, which means to turn back, turn around. Jeremiah 6 and 16 says, seek the old paths. Now, I'm not talking about all that legalism. I'm talking about the old seeking God when church was about coming and praying and seeking the Lord. And then not leaving until God came down. Not getting up from the altar until the Lord answered your prayer. Hallelujah. Y'all ever heard that, that statement, uh, phrase, praying through? Anybody ever heard that? Praying through means that you pray until God reaches down and touches. Hallelujah. And you know that you've got your answer from the Lord. Hallelujah. Repent and do the first works. Get back to the basics. Get back. Don't get so caught up. Yeah, we need to do the higher works of the Lord. Yeah, we need to be concerned with theology. We need. It's, it's love. It's wonderful to get in the meat of this word and just sit there, brother. Sometimes I just, oh man, I just, I can study all day. Just the more revelation I get, but I don't need to forget the basics, brother. I better remember how to love. I better remember how to forgive. I better remember hallelujah that I need to pray. I better remember that I need to fast. Because that's spiritual warfare. And if I I'm not careful. The devil will have my, me to glaze my eyes over and think I'm doing all right. But really, I'm walking in darkness. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm saying the words, but I don't have the Spirit of the Lord within me. Hallelujah. To point me in the right direction because I, I have forgotten the foundation 
of what it is I'm doing. Hallelujah. And I know this morning, amen, you were probably, well, you're going to preach a shouting sermon. He's going to preach a, a glorious sermon. No, yes, we're going to do some shouting this week, but you know what? We're too close to the end. We're too near the rapture. Amen. And it's time we did an evaluation. Listen, how many of any, any y'all go to the doctor? Spend all kind of weight. And, and, and when, you, when you go to the doctor, then you just walk in there and you walk, he says, hey, Mr. Good Bread, come right on in. That way it works. You have to sit there. You have to sit there for at least two hours. Some of y'all looking at it, they look at you, watch. So well, he done preached an hour. Any time to go home? Any time to eat? I know I saw some food come up in this piece. Amen. But we go to the doctor's office and we'll sit there for two hours. Waiting on the doctor. We know something's wrong. We don't know what it is. And brother, do we care? Do we want him to tell us the truth or do we want him to tell us a lie? Well, that pain that you're feeling, it's just, it's just a minor thing. It's really cancer, but you, that would hurt your feelings. So I'm not going to tell you it's cancer. <laughs> you could sue me for defamation and and, and scare you. You might try to sue me because I'm so I'm not going to tell you the real truth that you're going to be dead in six months. You all right? Go fishing. <laughs> huh? You when you when they buried you and they, and they did autopsy and found out you had stage four, 15 cancer. You somebody in your family want to sue somebody? Huh? Why didn't that doctor tell me the truth? Why didn't he? he, he I, I did. I let him poke all those needles in me like a like, and run all them tests, all the X-rays and MRI and RIB and BE and all that stuff, and let them scan me, let them, you know, do all that stuff, and hey, come out with some stupid something. I'm dead, Amen. and he didn't tell me the truth. We'd be mad, yeah. but at the same time, now preacher, don't you preach too long because you know. It, it hurts me to say, uh, you know, i got a ball game to watch that comes over 12 o'clock, brother. You, you know, <laughs> you know, Alabama play, played yesterday, Georgia playing, whatever's playing today. Amen. <laughs> don't, don't, get, don't get me in that altar praying. I, that, my knees hurt. Amen. Now, don't, don't preach too long. And sure enough, don't hurt my feelings. Don't tell me what the, what the real deal is. You just tell me something nice and easy and good. Make me feel good. Let me go home and make me think I'm, I'm all right. Anybody ever heard of uh, Pastor Bert Clendenin? Ever heard of that name? He was a he was a Pentecostal he was a Pentecostal preacher. I believe it was he was with Church of God. I don't remember what denomination. But anyway, God gave him a vision of a man going through hell and he was picking people up and throwing them back down. Picking them up, looking at them, throwing them down. Picking them up, looking at them, and throwing them down. Thanks, brother. I work alone. <laughs> Amen. That's right. And when he asked the Lord, what, what was he showing us? He he's going through hell looking for a preacher that lied to him. Because he was in hell because he tickled his ears all of his life. Told me everything was all right. Oh, that's all right, brother. Everybody does it. It's okay, brother. Don't worry about it. And he was in hell. Burning for an eternity. I don't think when you get to hell, you're going to have time to go around looking for no preacher. It's going to be rough now. I don't want to go. But we are on the edge in America. We are on the edge. And right here in Centronelle, Alabama, brother, this little church could begin a revival that would sweep the nation. Amen. If God's people would say, you know what, I've had enough of all that fairy tale stuff. I want the truth. I want the word of God. And I'm going to stay here till I get it. I'm going to stay here till I'm not the same person I was when I walked through those doors. I do not want to be the same person at the, at the end of the week as I was at the beginning of the week. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to be different. I want to be changed. I want to be transformed. I want to be deeper in God, closer to God at the end than I was at the beginning. Hallelujah. Give God some praise up in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand your feet. Hallelujah. You would all over this building. Brother, you can do the... And we're just this morning, we're going to open the altar.
For us to come and to, and to pray and seek God. And you do your own personal business with Him. And say, Lord, search my heart and see where I am. I want to be revived. I want to be different. I want you to search me honestly and tell me honestly what I need to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke the power of the enemy right now. And we ask you, Lord, that no devil come near this place. God, I pray that you loose your, your, your church, loose your people in the name of Jesus to come and respond to this altar call and to seek your face. And let us begin this revival by praying and saying, Lord, search my heart. Search me, Lord. You count on my sometime. When I count to three, I want you to come to this altar just as fast as, turn on up, brother, just as fast as you can, hallelujah, and find a place if you need to sit, sit in on the front. If you can kneel, kneel, in the name of Jesus, one, two, three, come right now, hallelujah. We're going to have revival. Come right now. Lord, I'm going to have a come on us. Hallelujah. So sing to Jesus. Oh, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. Sing to Jesus. Oh, let us return to the first words. Let us return, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, 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 today, this morning, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Give us victory over the flesh. Give us victory over the flesh in Jesus' name. Let us draw closer to you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Search us, O oh God. Search us, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you right now, those that are standing or sitting, I want you right now to begin to pray and call out the name of the person that you want to get saved this week. Begin as Lord, I want you to save my, my, my son, my daughter. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Hold on, hold on, hold on, come on, come on. And you can't contain your joy inside. Hallelujah, hold on, hold on, come on, come on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, come on. Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, y'all, let it be, come on, come on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we pray for this community. We pray for Citronel, Alabama. We pray, God. Lord, we pray for the one that's walking that's walk the streets. We pray for those that, are, that don't know you, Lord. That your spirit would speak to them. With your Holy Spirit, that you would speak to their hearts in the name of Jesus and begin to draw them. Lord, we want revival. We don't want just an emotional experience. We want revival. We want what our forefathers had. We want what they had in the upper room. We want, God, what the early disciples had in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we commit to come this week and to search you and to press into your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. You know, that's my, my prayer every day, brother. When I leave the house or when I get up, I ask the Lord to search me. Turn that search light on to see what he, can, what he finds in me. Praise God. I want to get it right. Amen? Praise God. I want to make it right. I want to be able to stand before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and He'll say that word, enter in thy good and faithful servant. I want to hear those words. I don't want to hear him say, depart from me because I never know you. That'd be some awful words, wouldn't it? But David, you know, I did a message on that. He prayed that prayer. And down deep inside, God couldn't find no hatred in him towards Saul at all. David didn't hate Saul. Had no hatred, no resentment, nothing in him towards Saul. Read your word. 
He respected the man still as God's anointing. And the Lord revealed to me Saul was still king the same time David was king. One had the anointing. David didn't touch him. We got to be careful in the day and time that we're living in. 